I'm scared of heights. I can't even believe that I had to climb this whole thing to get up here. You know what, Amaya? Uh-huh. All the journeys I've seen you take around yeah. Africa and the <laughs> world, my brother. You know, and how brave you are dealing with policemen and dealing <laughs> with all this and that. And, you know, and then, you know, sometimes when I see you get scared of a little water, <laughs> a little swimming. Everyone needs to know now, that what am I is scared of heights. Height. I'm scared of heights. <laughs> I forced me to get out here. But brother, it's good to see you. Yes, pleasure is uh, mine. Thank you so much for supporting the movement. Karibu. For watching my videos and it's time for you to tell me your story. Welcome. Should I introduce myself? Uh, I think everyone already knows. No, you. everyone knows, but it's time for you to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, my name is Wadamaya, the one and only annoying YouTuber from Ghana. And I'm here in Nairobi, Kenya, here to tell the African stories by an African. So please help us reach 600,000. Thank you so much by subscribing. Okay, S tell me your name, who you are, and what are you doing in here? Well, first, I cannot let you begin after that wonderful introduction and how many times I've watch you give introductions without at least come on what am i i, I want to you father oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's easy to watch every single video yeah well no i'd say i've been following you all the way from china i always oh. joke uh, when you were messing around with some of the chinese women i'm so happy that uh the trudy and the true maya gang now is in full effect okay. and that you've uh, come back home Thank you. And uh, you've actually come back to Nature Farms. That's where we are, back to Nature Farms. Greetings, my name is uh, Kunga mm. Kihohia, and I'm happy that you are here with today. As a matter of fact, I'll say, since we're about 9, 12 feet in the air that mm. we had to climb up, I want to say, take a second, breathe. Ah, breathe out? Or breathe uh, in? Oh. Breathe out. <laughs> and then, how did your friend say? No Corona! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no corona here. No corona. We're in the village. Exactly. All the way in uh, central Kenya, mm. in a place called uh, Muranga County, mm. um, here at Back to Nature Farms. Uh, organic farms, I want to make sure I specify that. And uh, we're happy to uh, welcome you all the way Thank from uh, Ghana. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But your accent doesn't sound like a typical Kenyan accent. Yes. Are you a Kenyan? Well, to me, my accent sounds like uh, my accent, but uh, <laughs> we are Kenyan, we are African by heritage, mm. uh, both parents, but born and raised in uh, Miami, Florida, oh, where okay. I grew up, uh, came back home, I consider Kenya home, first time I was uh, 10 years old, I stayed here for uh, five years, that's where I learned to speak Swahili, Najua Kuangia Swahili, Najua Egwari Agikoyo, that's how you say, uh, how you speak uh, Kikuyu in, in our mother tongue, okay. in our sense. And um, so that's why you probably hear me uh, speak a little bit you know, uh, in this way. I, I'm so sorry. I don't want to say you're crazy, but I know there's so many young Africans out there who are going to say that this guy is really crazy. You're born and raised in Miami. You left all that and come and settle in Africa. And you're not just settling in Africa, you are just a farmer. And you know, in Africa, we have that perception that a farmer is a poor man. Mm. Are, you a, are you a poor man? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> poverty is a state of mind. Hmm. Now, you can be broke. Broke is just a temporary condition. Hmm. But poverty is a state of mind and it's, it's, you can change being broke. It's very hard to change being poor. Hmm. So I've been broke many a times in my life and I've uh, been fortunate to change that uh, several times as well. Hmm. Uh, but no, I want to say that I work against a poverty mindset. Uh, I would say a scarcity mindset hmm. every day to make sure that I'm able to develop a uh, uh, consciousness of abundance in that regards and so i would say being called crazy is something wonderful as a matter of fact i consider you kin because you're one of the craziest people i ever <laughs> that i ever know and nothing great was ever accomplished by someone who wasn't considered crazy mm. at some particular point in time and so being raised yes miami florida that's um that's home that's where i knew uh they call it 305 the the, the, the dirty south the bottom um and being raised there most of my life um, but at some particular point in time, I realized that every human being on the mm. face of this earth has a place they call home. Mm. And in that regards, no matter where you might travel around the world, whether no matter where you may be born in, just like if we take a horse and uh, from one country to another country, right? Say if it's an African horse mm. or an African elephant, 
and you take it to a circus or a zoo in a, somewhere in America, does the child of that elephant all of a sudden not belong to where the mother or father of that elephant came from? No, that elephant has a home too. And for me, Kenya, Africa is, was, always will be home in terms of this lifetime. That is a beautiful message. But I just want to say that you're doing an amazing job in here. Can you tell me what you're doing right now? Because I have seen it and people watching us in here don't know what you're doing on the ground. So can you tell us like what you're doing exactly in Kenya? Excellent. Well, once I got back home about four or five years ago, mm. and initially I was only going to be here for three weeks, but it has gone on to yeah, be now four or five years. Yes. 80% of my time here, about 20% of my time there in America. But once I got home, I realized what had happened in America uh, 20, 25 years ago mm. is starting to happen here on the African continent, which is this rise, an unprecedented rise of these non-communicable lifestyle diseases, diabetes, cancer, mm. hypertension, respiratory conditions are starting to affect Africans, whereas 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, they were almost non-existent there. And a lot of it has to do with lifestyles. You have a growing middle class, growing economies, growing disposable income. They're adopting more of the lifestyles they're seeing on television, they're seeing on Netflix, they're seeing in the movies. And behind that lifestyle, Western lifestyle, are coming the lifestyle diseases. And so a lot of people are experiencing um, these particular conditions and I one of the reasons that made me come back home was I was a place where I had to achieve a certain measure of financial success but I was unhealthy I was oh. unhappy and I said I was going to come back home come back to nature and that's where we are standing right now back to nature, nature farms because I got back home finding all these things that were happening with the suffering and pain and premature death from these diseases and said let's go ahead with a few other like minds I was able to associate with and launch and catalyze a movement called the back to nature movement wow. and back to nature movement is simply based on a very simple philosophy and ideology that the closer we are to nature the more whole happy at peace at ease we are. The further we get away from nature and to uh, processed foods and junk foods and all the rest, we get into a state of dis-ease, which is the root word of disease. So that's what got me into uh, farming and particularly organic farming with all, all the pesticides, with all, all the, argue, uh, the agricultural uh, uh, chemicals that they put on that are causing so much damage to people's lives that are being sold to a lot of farmers. By the way, would you know what am I at? There are several pesticides, chemicals, that have been banned in Europe, they've been banned in America, but are still being sold to farmers through agrovets here in Africa. Why is that? And it's, the reason they've been banned in those other countries is because they're causing their carcinogens, uh, carcinogenic, and they're causing cancers. They're causing a lot of sickness. Mm. And so that's one of the reasons that we launched the Back to Nature Organic Farms. You know what? You need to take me around the farm. Yes. Let me check what you've planted so far. Excellent. And I will take you from there. No problem. I, I, only one thing. Mm. You've got to eat at least something small I will. from this farm here today. And how, many, how many acres do you have in here? We have about 20 acres here. Wow. Uh, even though we're developing it in phases, we've currently done about three acres. Uh, it's intended to be an avocado orchard. I love avocados right. in that regard. Actually, I'm a vegetarian myself. Oh, okay. uh, and moving even towards uh, you know vegan, raw foods. You may or may not know about raw foods. Mm. And avocado is like a staple product when you're talking about raw living foods but whether you're a carnivore meat dead flesh eater no problem avocados go well with all kinds of foods and uh, so you'll see some of the avocados and other things that we're growing on there so we'll descend you guys might get a chance to see how scared Watamaya is trying to climb down I don't know if they see that these are 220 these are 10,000 liter water tanks because water is very very important when you are farming and we okay. discovered that and so we've raised them up this high we've oh. built a, a water tower to use gravity because then the gravity allows the water to get pumped and distributed through irrigation into Ooh. the fields that you'll get a chance to so walk through and you see. So literally get everything in here. Literally everything in here and it's worked by solar panels. If you look up, these are solar panels. We've dug a borehole. We've gone down about 700, 800 feet, about 250 meters. Ooh. And the sun comes on, beautiful nature. It pumps and brings the water all
all the way up into these tanks it stores them uh, and then they're able to distribute the water out through irrigation through the system wow. yes so in here, you'll find a wonderful mix of different horticultural fruits and vegetables. And in that, we have cabbages. You see here growing, uh, those who may or may not know passion fruits Ooh, and the beauty, wonderful. That's how, it looks like. that's how they look like as they grow. And they'll grow and become a whole entire cover area. On there, you'll see some cabbages that we have on the ground. In between that, we're growing some uh, what we'll call our indigenous vegetables in Kenya. The tereres, those Kenyans, East Africans might know uh, that we have indigenous vegetables. Spider shade, they might call it in English, etc. We have some maize that are here. On this particular side, you'll see some spinach. You'll see some Swiss chard. Uh, you could actually call Swiss chard the spinach here in uh, Kenya. You'll see a mix of beans that are on here. You'll see uh, where we came from the water system up there. This is how you get the water pressure that gets distributed throughout the land. The reason it, it goes out with that much pressure is because of the elevated towers. And the, all this has come from the borehole in the ground that we had gone uh, 250 meters deep, pumped the water up and through gravity it pushes it. And then we just attach pipes here and then, and then we're able to water there. When we get to the back you'll see a sprinkler system that we've been able to set up. All this so that we can grow food. There are a lot of times people might go to grocery stores mm. or especially in America you have these big you know shopping centers and stuff and people don't know where the, the food, food is coming from. from. And then on top of that what is used on the food and in the food in order to grow the food. A lot of pet chemicals and stuff. So come here really quickly. Here in our uh, grading shed, mm. you have opportunity to see something quite interesting that we're doing here. Uh, right in here um, is an interesting concoction mix that we are growing organically bacteria, healthy bacteria that's made Two out of, you see, can you smell it? Yeah. There you go. It's like a see, mix. It's a mix between molasses. It's a mix between healthy, great bacteria, a lot of green folia that we put in there. And that's how we make organic uh, inputs that we can be able to put onto the uh, building up the soil because the soil is very, very important uh, that we can be able to also have ways of naturally controlling pests and diseases because when you farm, you always have these natural, natural pests and diseases and how can you chase them away or work in harmony with them without spraying too much uh, chemicals. So come over here, let me introduce you to our wonderful cow uh, and in that regard... I wanted to ask you, why do you have a cow in here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you get a chance to see um, a cow and a cow is part of an ecosystem of a farm okay. because when you feed the cow and then the cow goes to the bathroom, either number one or number two. You can work your way this way. So this is where we feed the, the cow and he gets a chance to drink. You come in and say hi, Guno. Come in and say hi, Guno. How you doing? How you doing, baby? So now with that, when she goes ahead and pees, mm -hmm. when she goes ahead and uh, uh, goes to number two, mm. what happens, we're able then to collect that, draw it, and we send it to a pit. And this is like a composting pit that's here that we collect certain dry material, we mix it together in that. And then from here, we move it uh, to a particular composting heat, heap. And in that, we put certain particular healthy bacteria. We mix it with ash. We mix it with water, several different components that then in about eight, nine weeks, mm by turning it over every three weeks, you turn it over, you mix it, then Mother Nature at the end gives you a wonderful fertilizer, natural fertilizer that we're able then to use to grow green without the spraying of the chemicals and things along those lines. And so that's Everything, one of the reasons. So like if I should understand, yeah. you're literally doing an organic farming. Organic farm is the way to go. Back to nature is the way to go. And 
and we've got to stay close to the earth. So, because guess, guess what, Moramaya? Mm. With all the good work you're doing, mm -hmm. you are going to raise Africa to heights unimaginable. Africa to the world, <laughs> right? So now, what happens if we build such a wonderful Africa and then everyone is sick? Everyone has diabetes. Everyone has cancer. You won't even get, have an opportunity to enjoy this Africa that we're working so hard to see, right? So someone has to think about the food system. How do we, you know, have a value chain? How do we, in terms of produce food that's healthy so that Africans can think right, feel right, act right, and enjoy the beauty that the Almighty, as you say, grab Africa like you grab your woman. <laughs> there you go. So that's a little bit of a sort of this system. We have some goats there. You have an opportunity maybe to see some chicken, you know, etc. Uh, and we also use their byproducts, their ways and stuff um, for that. Uh, you may see the cows and, and the goats in the back there, but we do let them out, let them breathe, uh, uh, graze etc. Well, my brother, I just want to say, if you ever have been to Starbucks mm -hmm. or any coffee house around the world, some of the best coffee grown in the world is grown here in East Africa. Because remember, Africa has 60% of the world's arable land in terms of growing, and we grow everything. So right here, we have an example of a coffee tree. This on a coffee tree? Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you see the little baby coffee pellets <laughs> that we have on here? Oh my god, like, oh, I've never seen a coffee tree before, not to talk of the coffee beans. Yes. When it comes to cocoa, cocoa I know. Cocoa, that one we've seen you, uh, you go, yeah? Yeah. that's a young uh, coffee bean. It usually oh will god. get red, it turns color, and when you bite it, it will be sweet. Now it's going to be sour because it's young. Mm. But this is how the coffee grows on coffee trees. Ooh. And here on about... Uh, oh, these ones are coffee trees. Actually, no, funny enough, look this way. If you look all the way here, every little stump in the ground, we've just pruned them. You see, every 10, 15 years, you prune, you cut, you leave the stem in the ground, and they start to grow. So if you look here, we have probably about uh, another five acres mm. just of uh, coffee, coffee alone. In man, that regards, you are living the life, man. Well, my brother, you got to understand Africa, as you always say, right? I've if been, you haven't been to Africa, you haven't seen God. God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you think it's worth it to be a farmer in Africa? I would have to say there's probably nothing more rewarding than getting your feet dirty, connecting to the soil. This soil is what, even if you go back, spiritual system with the Bible, right? We came from the soil, we're going back, back to the soil. soil. This soil is what gives us food, it's what allows us. So there's nothing more. To me, I look at this soil, African soil, as sacred soil. So farming in Africa is a beautiful thing. Getting close to nature, that's why we call this farm Back to Nature Farms, is something wonderful. And when you can do it sustainably and profitably, and provide employment. You've seen some of our workers yeah, exactly. and be able to help them, you know, pay their school, their children's school fees. You know, we know we're putting good food on people's table. Then what, what am I? There's going to be nothing that's more fulfilling. Not running around in a rat race in a concrete jungle in America, ah, trying to duck and hide from police, no, no, okay. trying to run away oh. from the, the system they're always trying to get you. So uh, absolutely. Yes. If you have a message for your brother, fellow brothers and sisters in the diaspora, if you want to tell them to come back home, what would that message be? The message will be, particularly to those of African ancestry, even though we do know that all humanity started in Africa, all humans on the earth eventually, and this is proven scientifically, yeah. their genes trace back to Africans, but particularly the Africans who look like Wardamaya and myself who are on the earth today. We have a African civilizational inheritance which has been disinherited from us. Part of claiming that heritage, Wodemaya, particularly our civilizational heritage, mm. is repatriating first mentally and psychologically and eventually physically, eventually spiritually, if you've ever lived outside of Africa, you know people that look like us, what am I, uh, 
always find ourselves on the, catching the short end of the stick everywhere in the world. We always find ourselves being the most disadvantaged. It is on this land that we currently stand that we have the greatest opportunity to be the fullest, to, to realize our fullest potential as human beings. And so we're not saying because 80% of my time I spend here, 20% of my time I spend over there. We're not saying you have to be here 100% of the time, but you've got to come. And what am I? Let's come down a little bit. You've got to come and reconnect with Mama Nature, with Mama Africa, back to nature. And there's nothing that re can replicate that. There's no amount of money. There's no amount of fame. There's no amount of cars, houses that can be able to give us, Otomaya, this feeling, this experience that we have when we connect with the earth that we come from. So come back home, get to experience what this man experiences every day of his life, traveling around the world, traveling around Africa and all the countries and getting a chance to give us experiences. I told him, Wadamaya, what you're really doing is therapy. You're giving people psychological therapy, especially Africans, because we've been so poisoned psychologically with images that show us ourselves in negative lights, less than human beings, three-fifths of a human being. But what this man does, which is we cannot even pay him back for. He gets a chance to therapeutic, psychologically give us therapy and shows ourselves in a positive image. The narrative of Africa changes. So Asante, Sana, my brother. Karim I know. Uh, I don't have Corona. Don't worry. I want to say thank you so much for taking me around your farm. And um, I hope people can reach out to you on this email I'm going to put on the screen. Excellent. People can reach out to you on your number so that they'll be able to buy stuff from this farm. It's by force to buy from is it back to nature back organic to nature? farms i wanted to mention your name but i couldn't remember Kunga Kunga. <laughs> thank you brother yeah